Detroit. Awesome. Welcome, Sharon. Welcome. Awesome, everybody. Well, I think it's about time that we get this party started. So uh, everybody, welcome for everybody that's popping in and continuously popping in. I see those numbers climbing, which is awesome. Thank you so much for popping on to our, what, fourth Tech Talk now? Yep. Yeah. Tyler and Riley have just, they've come up with this awesome series that we're trying to do once a month called Tech Talk. So be sure to stay tuned for upcoming ones. The next Tech Talk is actually going to be scheduled for May 14th. It's another Thursday at 11 a.m. We'll make sure to get the link out to everybody who participates today to make sure that you can register for that upcoming Tech Talk. But this week, we are hitting a topic I think that everybody and their mother's brother and sister and aunt and uncle and cousin are talking about. And it is virtual, working remotely, working working from home. Hey, John from Alberta, Canada. Um, this topic is so hot and so, so on fire. And it's actually funny. I've participated in two other webinars this week. There's so much online content that's happening right now, especially in the real estate industry for agents. And so it's really cool because what we're bringing to you today is actual guidance, step by steps on how to actually do these things. Lots of webinars come out and say, you should do Facebook Live or you should do uh, email marketing, but they don't actually show you how to do it, right? So we are actually going to dive deep today into a couple of our favorite tools and assets on how to embrace this virtual real estate hecticness that we are now all consumed in. <laughs> so a little bit about our team. My name is Deborah Brownell. I'm the sales and marketing director at Coming Soon Homes. For those of you that may have heard the name Marty Hampton, top agent with Remax, now EXP. Um, she is also the owner of Coming Soon Homes. She also runs a fantastic, huge team out of Raleigh, North Carolina, where Mr. Riley, he's repping the shirt is Warren. Um, so we I have one somewhere. <laughs> so do I. I should have worn it today. I didn't think about it. Um, but then I got Mr. Riley. Riley is an awesome marketing specialist at Marty Hampton Real Estate. I'm trying to, to get him over to the dark side at Coming Soon Homes, but we'll see if that happens. And then I got Mr. Tyler Lee, who is one of my favorites ever. He is phenomenal at video. He's an awesome marketing specialist of ours here at Coming Soon Homes. So these two guys are constantly out there building content for all kinds of platforms for real estate agents in the country. And so today we're going to give you some nice tidbits of information about how we can really um, embrace the change that we're all having to deal with in business right now. So I pulled a, re a really quick quote up that all things are difficult before they're easy. And boy, is that true. Um, and it's by Thomas Fuller. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is just to kind of set precedence on what we're dealing with now. We are in the midst of this virus. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time about it now, but it is changing the way we will do business. And to be honest, everything we're going to show you in today's webinar, you can literally continue doing after this all clears out. There's no reason why your business should not be virtual, why your business should not be remote. It was kind of funny when we got the work from home order, the statewide uh, shelter in place order, because you know it was just like business as usual for us. We can, My team can work remotely for wherever there are. And uh, it's a fabulous feeling to know that you can continue business as usual. And if, if anything, we have more time now to kind of critique and edit and perfect things in our processes while things are a little bit slower. So keep in mind, I'm getting some chat messages. If you lose audio or video, just go back to the link, refresh your link page, and you should be good to go from there. It hasn't happened a whole lot, but just in case that does, just refresh your feed. Um, so going on to the next, now there are a ton, there is a ton of data out there right now that are showing how many people are online right now. So this is even before this uh, COVID-19, but 28% of American adults are now reporting that they go online almost constantly. And that's crazy. So if you look at this chart by Pew Research Center, you can see how frequently, the frequency that people are going online, whether it's social media, email, whatever, they're going online. So what is your business doing to capitalize on that attention, especially right now when people don't have anything else to do but go on their phones and go on their computers and go on their TV screens. So why not find out clever ways to uh, utilize that? And so here is the presentation flow about kind of how we're going to be going through this today. Uh, we talked to you a little bit about us and the current marketing conditions. Uh, one thing that we want to talk about is where the attention is at online. Uh, if you've noticed, there's been a lot of more people online. If you've tried to upload anything to YouTube in the past 48 hours, it's been a nightmare. Um, we're also going to talk about virtual open houses and a few of our favorite pieces of software. We're going to talk about Glip uh, by Ring Citral, Google Hangouts, and FaceTime, Loom, and QuickTime Player. And then I also have a little presentation on Google Drive. In my opinion, the best kept secret 
on the internet because people might know about it, but they don't really, really know how to use it. And you will definitely know how to use it after today. Awesome. Now there are a ton of different things and tools and services and things that you can get access to as an agent or just as a small business owner um, to help you show homes virtually. Now I've talked to lots of agents. Some have just completely stopped business. Um, some are continuing business as usual, depending on their market. And some are in statewide, you know, work from home mandatory orders. And so it really just depends on your market, but whether or not this is happening, you should pinpoint your business and pivot your business to be able to work remotely, to be able to show homes virtually. I mean, imagine if none of this was going on in the first place, you go, you not having to physically go out to tour a home, but you can do it all on video remotely. That's a powerful thing. And guess how much time that just saved you and money and gas going over to that property, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to show you some really cool ways to actually show homes virtually. So let's dig this in. All right, so um, this is actually, the, if you're wondering why I just have a picture of just a girl at a pool and a swan, yeah, right there. Um, <laughs> this is actually one of the agents I work with. Her name is Mary Simpson, and she is the queen of Facebook Live and anything to do with uh, walkthroughs through a home. She'll actually just take her phone and just go through the house. But her little signature, she jumps in the pool if they have a pool. So that's a fun little picture I took there. And... Uh, I'm actually just going to, I have a quick little video uh, for both Facebook Live and Instagram Live on how to do it actually. So if you are um, relatively new to Facebook Live or Instagram Live, I have a video on how to do each one of those. So I'll start with Facebook Live. Uh, th and then these videos that I'm actually showing are actually from our coming soon page and our uh, Marty Hampton page. And every Tuesday I post these little tech tips. They're, they're really short. They're only like 30 seconds long. Uh, so here's one of them right here. I'm excited for this. I love watching Mary. <laughs> mm. Hopefully we have the bandwidth. There we go. Okay, obviously super short and kind of to the point. And if you guys ever, if you guys, if that wasn't enough, I can actually just show you just on my phone too on how to do it. Uh, so just comment if you, if that wasn't enough for you. And then also I have one on um, Instagram. It's, it's going to be basically the same because uh, Facebook and Instagram, uh, Facebook owns Instagram. So a lot of the same stuff is going to be, or a lot of the tools on how to do it is going to be practically the same. So here is the Instagram one. I'm like jamming over here. I'm having too much fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, feel free to you bring that energy when you are doing your Facebook Live because if, if you bring that energy, people are going to be more likely to engage with your post because, oh, this person is just like me. I'm fun. I think I'm fun. So <laughs> when you're fun, other people are more likely to like it, especially like I'm more likely to share something if it's funny too. Mm -hmm. Like I'll share it to all my oh, yeah. friends. Oh, hilarious. Look at this. Look at this. This lady just jumped in a pool. That's so I'm more likely to share stuff like that. Obviously, if you, I mean, you don't have to do that. It just helps. Um, now, the only difference there between the Facebook and Instagram Live is you have to swipe uh, there. That's the only really thing that I've I've had to help people with is when you're on here itself. So actually, there's me. Um, <laughs> but you'll see this right here on the bottom left, you just have to swipe all the way to the left until you see live. That's really the only difference. Oh. And then when you're on there, um, then you're live. And then also uh, 
on the live thing itself, I want to point this out, is you can actually change it from face uh, the face camera or to um, just the front camera. So you can actually show the house or yourself, depending on how you want to do it. Or after this epidemic, if you're one of those agents and you're a little bit concerned about having to do too many things at once, worry about how you look, how you're talking, what you're saying, what's behind you, recording yourself at the same time, that's a lot to think about, let's be honest. And yeah. so, um, you know, if you have someone with you, an assistant or a friend or another fellow agent, a buyer's agent that might be partnering with you on that listing, um, have them walk around and record you and use that footage. And again, Riley's actually going to tap into some alternatives if you're worried about live. I talked to lots of yeah. people. People and they're like, you know what, Deborah lives too much for me. <laughs> like, you know, I just too much could go wrong. And I totally get that. But there's alternatives even if you don't want to do the live way. Absolutely. Um, where's the slides? Let's get back into the. All right. So the other alternatives, uh, YouTube live, I wouldn't suggest unless you have a bigger YouTube following. And if you do, let me know, because I'm trying to uh, grow our YouTube page and I would like to know your secrets. Um, FaceTime, I wouldn't suggest this either because the idea of a virtual open house is to get as many people there. Uh, I would, as I would suggest FaceTime just with, uh, if you were doing a one-on-one -on -one with a, a, one of your customers or one of your clients. Um, there's also, uh, let me go back. There's also, you can do an open house video, just a walkthrough. If you have a videographer to somebody in your staff that knows how to do video, you can just walk through the house and talk about uh, certain things. Now, gonna, here, let me interject real quick, yeah. Riley. Just on FaceTime real quick, he's totally right. Obviously, the whole point of a walkthrough video for agents is to get as many people as possible to be on that live feed, to be watching, to be participating, to be engaging. And the more people you can get on these live feeds, Facebook and Instagram will organically push those videos even more because you're using their live feed. So there are extra benefits, I think, of doing live versus not. But also with FaceTime, if you're a buyer's agent or you're working with a, a tough client, especially in the, the market dealings of what we're dealing with now, um, jumping on a FaceTime with them and touring a property yourself so your client doesn't have to go out to the property and jump on FaceTime with them individually and have that one-on-one -on -one with them and say, hey guys, I'm, I'm feeling this property right now. Let me give you a quick tour on FaceTime. And I think Riley actually told me something yesterday that I think was a really good point. FaceTime is very easy. So if you have an older couple or someone that might not be as tech savvy, um, FaceTime is really easy as long as they have what? And I iPhone, right? It's FaceTime. Yep. yep. I'm Samsung, so don't hate. <laughs> she turns all of our group text green. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'm the oddball out, but I like my Samsung and I like all my other Apple stuff. But we digress. Um, but anyways, but, yeah, I, I also wanted to add on to what you were saying is is face, uh, Facebook and Instagram really like live because uh, they will put if you can see on my screen here, those are live. That's at the top of the Instagram screen. So if you're live more people are likely to see that instead of having to scroll through all your stuff. You're actually on the top of Instagram or Facebook when you're live yeah. and you're more likely to uh, grab eyeballs just by doing that. Real quick, I'm going to interject one more time. We just got a private chat. Make sure, guys, if you have comments as we go through this, private message us or send it directly to the whole feed. Um, but someone's asking, Instagram, do you still use hashtags when you go live? That's a really good question. And I think, honestly, I think the answer might depend on who you talk to. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I, I've talked to some specialists in marketing that, you know, do put hashtags on there and then there's some that don't. Um, there's some people that put hashtags in the comments, but not in the body of the Instagram post. And so truthfully, I, I don't really have a concrete answer for you. I don't think there's necessarily enough data out there to tell you if A or B is better. I think also it depends on maybe what piece of content it is. Um, so just consider that. Anything you guys have? Yeah, I wanted to add this is this. Um, this is actually just a quick little tip that we found out uh, when we're doing Instagram uh, hashtags. It's not if you're using the same bulk ones, uh, Instagram will actually ding you. And we found mm -hmm. that if you put in if you put in your own manually, they're more likely to feed those instead of just your bulk one. You're actually getting punished for uh, bulk posting your hashtags. That 
So true. We actually, we, our team here at Coming Soon Homes had to change our own strategies because we used to do all the research on our agent clients and their and their competitors and their markets and figure out what hashtags are trending that they need to trend for. And so we were kind of using duplicated hashtag blocks, which was fine back in the day. Mm -hmm. Before they switched this algorithm, that was kind of how people did it. But now thanks to this great algorithm shift yet again, we've had to update our strategies. And just to kind of drop in there real quick, it's hard hard to stay up on every single time a new tool changes an algorithm you have to shift your strategy so hiring a team like ours at coming soon homes can really be beneficial for your business because you don't even have to think about when that stuff happens we just kind of switch up the process um, Susan has a good point too so she said I don't really understand hashtags and how they work um, do you want you guys want to take that or you want me to take that just think of it as another way of getting noticed uh, if so, some people they'll scroll through hashtags and just look through. So one that we really like to do, like in our market, is we like to just do Raleigh or Raleigh real estate, and then people are, will click that and then they'll find us. Uh, and then we also like to have our own hashtags. So I use Move with Marty. So whenever we are at an event, we like to promote people to actually put that on their stuff, so we can also be found that we're in the community as well. It's basically just an easy way just to get free exposure and just be out there and to be discovered. Anything you want to add to that? I'm going to show you something real quick. So just to give us ourselves a little shout out, go follow Coming Soon Homes on Instagram um, and we'll make sure to follow you back as well. Just search for Coming Soon Homes. But if you guys hop on your own Instagram feed, whoops, and you go onto the homepage, whatever like you come up with, right, you should be able to, I think Riley's going to talk about stories too. But all I would do is right at the bottom where you see the little, the little magnifying glass, go ahead and hit that and a little search bar will come up. Now in the search bar, you could type in whatever you want. This is really, it's like, just like Riley said, it's like Google, but for Instagram. Um, so search by your city, search by your county, search by real estate, look up what's trending and customize your own hashtag strategy. Honestly, I think every single agent, team or brokerage should have their own hashtag strategy. You need to do the research, you need to know what your competitors are doing and you need to know what's working in your market so you can feed off of that. Um, well, fun little thing to do is if you found something that's working for your competitors, just use the same one. And you're Ooh, yeah. <laughs> you're that, off that bad boy. <laughs> they did all the work. Yeah. Bev, another good question. Can you be live on Instagram and Facebook simultaneously? Yes, you have to have two different devices. Ah, that's the key. Not yep. yet. You would think that Facebook and Instagram would do that, but they just haven't done that yet. Yeah, you can like you can post something to both Instagram and Facebook at the same time. And actually, um, Facebook does like that. They'll actually more likely to show that uh, mm -hmm. if it's from both because they're self-serving. They want both Instagram and Facebook to work. But yeah, if you want to be both live on Facebook and Instagram, you're going to have two different devices. So if you have somebody with you, use your phone and their phone or an iPad and your cell phone. Mm hmm. So I think a lot of helpful things. Tyler's like the, the king of tools and uh, this guy will hook you up with anything you need. But just imagine, I mean, if you had two phones, even if you had your personal oh, primary yeah. phone. I have two phones. And an old phone, you could get one of those little tripods, set them up in front of you, roll Facebook Live to one and Instagram Live to the other. And so it's a little bit annoying to have to do it that way. But let me tell you, it is powerful to go live if you are comfortable and you can get that oomph behind it. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Lizzie, for following us. I'm going to follow you back. Don't you worry about that. Uh, Pam, so if we come up with our own hashtags, do you get penalized or not? That's a good question. If you if you bulk post the same one over and over, yeah. yeah. But if you just put your own in on everything, no. <laughs> Keep in mind though, you don't want to be the that person that's out there creating your own hashtag like cutesy rainbows and butterflies. Like the whole point of hashtags is to be a search function. So if I want to see what's going on in Raleigh, North Carolina, I'm gonna search by hashtag Raleigh NC or Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, so of course, develop your own hashtag for your company name. Like we use, just like Riley said, like move with Marty with for Marty's business or Marty Hampton Real Estate, or we've created the acronym MHRE. So there's different things, of course, that you can do that to build up your own brand's hashtag, but it's also crucial that you're implementing other hashtags that are already popular that you can kind of nuzzle your way in and feed off of that traffic. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Hopefully. And we've got another question from Lynn. It says, do you put hashtags in business and personal posts on Facebook? I Ooh. think that's really up to you. Um, yeah. Riley, what do you think? You know, I don't put hashtags on Facebook. 
the main ones that yeah. I put hashtags on are Twitter, Instagram, yeah. and LinkedIn. LinkedIn is actually really big with hashtags that I've noticed. So make sure you're putting your hashtags on LinkedIn and uh, Twitter. Obviously, Twitter is basically all hashtags. Uh, yep. So make sure you have those. Uh, but Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, I don't do anything with Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Hashtags and Facebook is very weird. Sometimes you can see it. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes they're hyperlinked. If you're viewing Facebook on mobile, you can see them. But again, you have to click on the post or like access it a different way. If you're just scrolling down, they're not going to be there. They're just going to look I don't, I don't know about you, but personally, if I see somebody that has a hashtag on Facebook, I go, oh, they don't really know what they're doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And that's true, Lynn. Why not if Facebook owns Instagram? That's 100% true. I, I don't have an answer for that. However, I do think it's critical for Facebook to keep those two platforms separate. If they if they make Instagram identical to Facebook and the same functionalities, the same transitions, everything, then it's kind of pointless to have both platforms. Yeah. And so the whole thing about, face, about Facebook, I think, versus Instagram is Instagram, uh, before we go down too deep of a rabbit hole on Instagram, um, but Instagram is very image based people go crazy for the images it really is amazing if you can even upload a gallery set of property images to instagram even over a video sometimes those convert better and so it's really really dependent on what you're doing where your placement of your hashtags are um but instagram is a phenomenal phenomenal tool however you do have to use it a little bit differently than facebook you can't just duplicate what you're doing across all your platforms it's got to be a little bit edited if that makes sense all right let's move on before we spend too much time on we can talk about instagram all day but <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, yeah that's my favorite didn't, that's my favorite didn't we, wasn't last month's um tech talk about social media can we uh, link people after the fact sure. to that so yeah. guys after the fact we'll go ahead and send a link to our most recent tech talk where it was very very much more in depth about social media in particular so we'll make sure to link you guys to that after the fact okay so the next uh tool that i wanted to talk to you about is matterport now this is an actual virtual tour of a home. Um, for the, so if a lot of people here probably know what it is, a lot of people here don't. Uh, so I just wanted to show you kind of what a Matterport looks like and what it does. But the biggest thing I wanted you to see is that the homes sell faster, we actually 10 days faster and for more money uh, compared to homes without them. And I th also think that's because of uh, people like us, uh, millennials, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> we're becoming part of the market and we expect all of these things when we're looking to make a purchase on a home. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm more likely to look at a house if I can actually tour it that way than if just a bunch of gallery uh, photos. Now, can I make a point here real quick? Yeah. Sorry to interject. And I just had this kind of visual. This sounds so silly, but when you go into a grocery store, into the cereal aisle, right? What is there? There's options. People, I don't care what buyer, what industry you're in, whether it's grocery stores or real estate, the more things, the more things that you can provide to buyers that people can digest about a potential property. If they're interested, they're going to click on every dang video. They're going to read all the verbiage. They're going to read everything. And also consider the way that you're portraying your own listings. Other sellers are watching that. So if a seller looks at, oh my gosh, they do Matterport, they do drone, they do a heavy social media marketing campaign. They do email marketing to their database. Guess what? You're going to be the winner almost guaranteed when you're up against other agents in that listing because they've seen already how you promote other listings. Am I right? Yeah, sure. I wanted to add on to that. And so what we do in our market is I'll take if a house sells really fast that I'll just send out, I'll send out just a nice little ad just to the radius around that area showing, Hey, this home went under contract in three days. Here's why. And I show yeah. them our our video, I'll show them our drone video, I'll show them everything that we did. And I'll just end it with, we do more for our clients. And then that's, we found, generates a lot of leads just from doing that. That's so true. So, so true. So I wanted to show you uh, what a Matterport looks like if you've never seen one. And I also wanted to show you what the back end of Matterport looks like if you do decide to go with one. So I'm going to play a video, a short little video on uh, everything that Matterport has to offer. Hello, everyone. I'm going to be going over the Matterport suite and how to navigate it and what all uh, you can do with it. So what we're going to start with here is the 3D photo that's on the front of the house right here. Uh, this is actually really nice if you have a house in a really cool area, maybe in front of a lake or, you know, by the beach even, uh, that you can get. I mean, obviously, this is just a regular neighborhood, but it also gives people a nicer look than what they would find just on Google Maps. But the main thing, uh, 
for the Matterport technology is the dollhouse. And you can just take the house itself and just scroll around wherever you want to go. And you can even see, you know, how it looks like floor plan wise. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to walk in the front here. So this is what it looks like right when you come in. Now, obviously, with what's going on right now with the coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, uh, this will actually give you an opportunity to still put people in your houses without, you know, anybody having to leave their house. And it also makes you obviously look like a, a good citizen. Now, uh, one other nice thing is it also gives you just a nice depth that you wouldn't get from just regular pictures. So, I mean, this is something I would even suggest when all this isn't going on in just running this for your houses regularly. And you can just walk around. And then also if there's like features that you really think are cool. Oh, look at this little bush, this little plant. You can just, you can just zoom in on there. Um, you also have, uh, like I was talking about, uh, the floor plan, you can just go right in and you can actually just see exactly how everything's laid out. That's kind of cool. It's a lot better than just looking at a picture of it. We'll go back into the 3D space. It's also uh, VR uh, support, so you can use you know, Oculus or uh, Samsung has one or any other uh, VR uh, it, that works with everything. Now, another nice thing about this is all of these... When this camera goes around the whole house, it's also taking pictures, so you don't have to actually pay for a professional photographer either, because you actually will get photos of all these rooms when they're in there. Another uh, cool thing is they give you also uh, teaser videos that I like to use these personally for marketing. Uh, when I'm marketing a property, I can, I'll just pull this and I'll just obviously add some other things, but you can just show them just little items like this. And it just pull and then go, oh wow, I can tour the tour this whole house. And that's just something you can use also for marketing collateral. Another cool uh, feature is they actually have a pretty decent amount of analytics so you can actually see uh, the amount of people that are looking at uh, your Matterport uh, just in the past week. Uh, this is this has gone up dramatically, obviously, because of home when they're on their computer a lot more and they can actually view these so we're getting about 14 per day what's well, that's not bad uh, all right and then also uh, you don't even have to pay for a, another company to actually give you a floor plan because you can actually get one on here as well and uh, they say that the accuracy is about 99% um, feel free to use that if you want it's just another cost saver so if you're worried about the price of Matterport it actually can even out to what you would be paying normally if you're getting measurements, pictures, or something, or a drone tour, or something like that. You can actually just use this. And especially right now, I definitely think that it's uh, worth your time. Okay. Love so it. I wanted to make this clear. I don't work for Matterport, and I don't get any money from selling their stuff. Uh, this is just <laughs> tools that we really like to use. And it's just uh, the suggestions uh, to use in the future. Can I make an interjection real quick on this? Yeah. So we actually had uh, one of the agents that we're affiliated with a couple months ago had a property in Raleigh. And for those of you that know Raleigh, North Carolina market, it's a super hot tech bed that's up and coming. There's lots of people from all across the country and the globe, honestly, that are feeding into this market. And so if you also are in a market like San Diego, DC, uh, Boston, New York, those big hubs where you got people and traffic coming in from everywhere, I really believe it is even more crucial for you to begin using technology like this because this agent that we're affiliated with had a buyer out of Canada, shout out to Can Canadians out there, um, we had a buyer out of Canada, didn't even come look at the property, didn't touch it, didn't feel it, nothing. They just looked through the Matterport tour, they walked themselves through the house virtually and guess what? Sight on scene offer for list price, I mean within I think the day of it hitting on the market. And so that is the power, especially if you're in one of those markets where you have people People coming in and out. Susan said she uses Matterport on all of her listings in Chi Town. Totally yeah, uh, that. We, yeah. ha we had a, a agent that was from Chicago. She said that that market was super competitive. Yeah. So Susan, kudos to you for trying to give you yourself, you know, an, an edge on your competition there. And I think that that would help for you. Gary says that he uses 
uses it for properties over 500,000. Uh, we actually do that too. We have a tier process of the amount of what we do for certain homes and Matterport's usually one of those for uh, properties over 500,000. And it's nice for our, for our listing agents on our team to bring that with them on a uh, listing presentation and say, hey, we actually will do this for you for your house. And it's just mm -hmm. gives them more ammunition um, to close the sale. And people like I really believe that sellers love a one stop shop. So if you're the agent that can walk into their home and say, guess what? I have an answer. I have a solution for every problem. Oh, your you know, your furniture is out of date. No problem. We'll stage it personally. Oh, you don't have the money for the, the full shebang of staging. Great. We'll virtually stage it. Um, you know, there's always a solution to this. But I think that 3D implementing any kind of technology, whether it's Matterport, a video walkthrough, even just implementing one of the things that we're talking about today, I guarantee will be a big game, game changer for your business this year. All right, I'm going to go back to the slide. Now, yeah. um, the things that I really wanted to point out, though, is the fact that if you, I know that Matterport can be expensive. Uh, they, roughly for us, uh, I've, our prices that with the vendor that we use from uh, th up to 300,000 square feet is a $145. But that will include everything that we gives us all the pictures that we got. So you could basically you get pictures for that price. You get uh, the outside exterior shots with that. Uh, you get uh, measurements too, and all of that can be, and it might even be cheaper in your market depending on what who you use. And you can use all of those things, uh, and it will save you money, but also give you just something different. Especially right now where a virtual tour is such a huge asset right now because you can't be going and looking at listings. And another fun thing is I talked about earlier is uh, it's compatible with VR headsets. So you really can get a feel of what it's like to walk through this house. If, if the, um, especially with uh, all of our all of the um, people buying houses are getting younger and younger, and they actually know how to use this technology. Mm hmm. Marcia said it's about 400 K plus in Atlanta is where they start that. I agree with her. I think Atlanta price wise is very similar in nature to Raleigh, maybe honestly a little bit more, I think, just depending on the area. Um, so just like Riley said, I think what is our mark where we start doing Matterport? 350. At? 350. Yep. So it's just that little sweet spot that we found can really make a difference. Um, real quick, Riley and guys, I'm going to drop in the chat one of our favorite vendors for his aerial look. Um, Robert is the owner of this phenomenal, phenomenal company. He's done a lot of uh, aerial drone footage, Matterport walkthroughs, video tours, etc. for us. So definitely check him out. He serves a lot of markets across the country. Can't guarantee it's your market, but I've dropped the link in. Definitely reach out to him and let him know that you heard about him from us well speaking of drones <laughs> uh, it's the same thing with the Matterport they they sell faster than with just pictures and it, it if you have a Matterport and a drone that's that's the, those statistics statistics probably go up even more off of that and 73% of homeowners say that they want to work with a real estate agent that uses all of this stuff that we were talking about earlier and when you have all this material, don't just use it just to sell the house. Use it to get more listings. Say, hey, you know, I just did that. We did a drone. We did a Matterport. We had all these things for our last seller. Wouldn't you want to go with us when we can offer more than just, you know, Mary Lou who just has pictures for her houses? That's so, so true. Drone videos are uh, – the when we like to use those are for properties that are really close to really unique things. So like if it's but right by a really popular park, if it's by the beach, if it's by uh, if you're locally, if it's by a university uh, and just the walking distance are really cool uh, features and amenities. And another cool thing is neighborhood. So if you have a really nice neighborhood that has an awesome community pool or anything in the community, you can actually just easily get the drone of that just by uh, because it's right by the house. So you wouldn't have to pay anything extra if you just ask your uh, videographer to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And keep in mind, guys, there's a lot of the times I've talked to some agents and they have a drone person that they use or a videographer, but you have to ask, make sure you're asking them, hey, FYI, this property I'm sending you out to on Saturday has an incredible amenities facility with a gym and a pool and all that. I need you to capture that. Or I know a lot of places and neighborhoods now have walking trails and dog parks. Those are the features that people want and care about. So make sure you're not just also 
also focusing on the listing, but focusing on what's around it, the proximity to neighbors, the proximity to shopping. If it's like seconds from the down the road from the best grocery store in town, you know, tell people about it. And the biggest thing about drones is there are a lot of professionals that use drones. You know, they know how to do everything. If you are like a hobbyist with this or you are an agent who wants to use a drone, just make sure you're in legal compliance with yes. your local laws on drones. They do have to be registered with the FAA. Uh, like my my apartment's very close to an airport, so like if I send up a drone, see ya. So <laughs> just be careful with that with a uh, drone photography. But as long as everything is in compliance and it's legal and it all looks good, like they were saying, drone photography is a phenomenal asset to have. And something I don't have listed on here, and if you don't want to pay for a drone, uh, you can also just use Google Google Maps. Just take mm -hmm. a screenshot of the area if it's right next to a park or if it's right next to a uh, you know beach or whatever you want it to be by, but make sure that you're also following Google's policies and make sure you just usually, you just have to have Google in there, but you can use that. It's free. And, and if it's, you know, if it's a lower end listing, you can still use Google to say, Hey, you know, this is right by schools, whatever it is. And then you don't have to pay for it, but it's just something unique that you can use. I'm going to do a quick uh, shout out to some of our agents because sometimes agents are busy. We know. And a lot of Marty's agents do a very heavy coming soon campaign for their listings while they're preparing for market. And so we've always asked these agents, take a quick exterior shot of the home, just like this horizontally, not vertically, horizontally. Oh gosh, yes. And take the picture of the exterior of the home because at least it's something physical that people can take a bite on. I see lots of agents and they don't even put one picture up at all of the property and if the property is you know maybe it needs a new roof the exterior is just totally wrecked if that's the case just like riley said use google um, at least show the eagle eye view so they can't physically see the front of the house there's so many creative ways to do it but you just got to do it <laughs> yep all right now deb i think you had some stuff for video to use do you want to play that or do you want me to talk about this and then go let me roll the poll first. Go ahead and talk while I do that. Okay. So what we found is that social video, uh, it, it creates a lot more engagement than just regular text and images. One thing I would like to add to that, though, is spread it out. Don't do only video and don't do only text and only do images. You know, spread it out. Do things differently because people just get sick. If they see the same type of video over and over, they're going to just they're just mm -hmm. be like, all right, well, I'm going to unsubscribe to this. All they do is just put videos. Make sure you – but your best stuff you want it to be your video because uh, it's more likely to get engaged with and also people retain that information 95 percent more than if it was just uh in a text 10 percent in text and then what was the video you wanted to show a video yeah let me see which one i was gonna do oh caitlin added uh if property is under renovation before and after pics are great collateral as well yes then that for video that's really fun to do to make it just transition from what it was to what it is now and the you're more than likely your seller is going to like that video too they're going to enjoy seeing that themselves so I'm going to bring up a quick listing video example. So just watch this quick video. It's a listing of one of our clients that we've made. But this is just going to show you a great visual compared to if you were to upload one or two stagnant images of the property, which do you think would be more engaging? One or two pictures or something a little bit like this? Let's check this out. So you, you can see that, you know, video really will make a difference. And there's a story that needs to be told, I think, with every listing. Um, not every listing is beautiful. Not every listing is a million dollar property. So honestly, the ones that are cheaper typically are even harder to promote sometimes. And I talk to some agents and they're like, Deborah, I don't even need to promote this listing. It's only 100, 150K. It's going to fly off the shelf this weekend. And I get that. It probably will. You're 100% correct. However, you could have gotten more 
leads, more potential buyers, more potential exposure off of that listing if you really promoted it and leveraged it the right way. And so these listing videos are just quick examples of content that my team can get out for, for listings and pretty fast, actually. I mean, we can probably turn a listing video within a few hours if we're really under the wire. And so the social content, no matter what it is, can really, really make a difference. Can we roll the presentation back up again? Yeah. And one thing I wanted to add to that, what you were just saying is you're also doing a disservice to your clients if you just think, oh, it's going to sell right away. But wouldn't okay. they want to have their house out there so they could get more offers, maybe above list price or in, in less days? It's just because if you did a little bit more for them and, and it's not that hard, you just take the pictures that you have. You don't need to have a video like we just showed. That was that was a video just out of pictures. It doesn't have to actually have somebody going around and shooting video in the house. You can still make yep. anything. I mean, I, I grew up, uh, when I started, I started just in coming soon. I took, just, I made a mountain out of a molehill. All I had was just <laughs> pictures, like pictures. And in the, back then they were taking their pictures horizontally too. <laughs> You you had an uphill battle. And yeah. what he was explaining is that we had a, a a version of our marketing program where now we'll promote listings active, coming soon, price reductions, anything you can imagine. But initially it was just coming soon. And it's funny because these agents that we partnered with, they were going out to the properties. God love them. They were going out, taking their pictures, so excited, but they were taking them like this. And it's very hard from a marketing perspective to clip that and get things to fit the right way. Because also consider on social media, a post post size on Facebook is a different size than on LinkedIn. Um, a post size on Instagram is different on you know, Facebook. And an IGTV video needs to be a different size than an Instagram post. And that sounds really confusing, I get it, but that's why you need a team behind you or at least someone you can trust, whether it's us or someone else that can help guide you through the best tools and ways to do things like this. Mm -hmm. but video is so powerful. And Thank actually, you while you guys are talking, oh, sorry. Are While you, you guys are talking on uh, video tours, I see Anita asks, what video technology or platform do you recommend? I'm going to go grab a couple pieces of equipment that I think will answer that question while you guys talk. Oh, you guys so get right a back. show today. <laughs> well, not only that, but we have, we have, if there's a video technology platform, <laughs> we have all of them because uh, yeah. they give us certain things. Obviously, if there was a perfect one, we would just have that one. If not, it's we'd true. use all of them. Uh, Animoto, it'd be like we video. Uh, I like to use Apple's um, iMovie suite iMovie. as well. Yep, Adobe <sighs> Premiere, all your Adobe products. But really, just like Riley said, I mean, Riley, we probably have 10 to 15 different tools just for video. And the crazy thing about that is really, we actually added up the total dollar amount cost for us having all those tools. And that's just to make the videos. Then we have scheduling tools to schedule and post to all your different channels. I mean, we have a lot of assets that we have to pay for upfront. So our clients don't have to, to cover that cost as well. So partnering with a team like us who tries to keep your cost as low as possible, but that already has all the tech tools and strategies implemented to make it a game changer for your business. I mean, that's what we're all about. But there's tons of video tools out there. But honestly, I feel like new ones are popping up every single day. So we're also always on the prowl for the new and latest tool to bring that into what our clients are doing. He's back. I am back. <laughs> I am. What did you guys talk about? Just talking about video and some of the tools. Okay. I do. <laughs> if, if you know me, uh, I do happen to like video. It is my thing. So I brought a few things here. Uh, that I recommend you use. So like, let's say you are with our marketing program and I say, I have a few clients who are very stubborn about wanting to do a video and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it just in case you're watching. <laughs> this, this, is, this is, I swear, people overthink this so much. I'm gonna show you what I use to shoot video about 75% of the time. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, my I'm telling you, this is all you need. It, I, we have hundreds of years of cinema blown down to this, it's an crazy. iPhone. These three cameras or two cameras or one camera on the back of your iPhone is better than everything that has been made before it. I mean, whether it's iPhone, Android, whatever, I'm telling you, like people just take your dang iPhone with you, do a selfie, do a whatever. See, these two are gonna go light on you, but I'm gonna be serious about this. I tell this to my clients all the time. People love a personality. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Don't I say this all the time? So I said this like true. four or five times yesterday. Oh people love a personality. Yep. 
yeah. why do you think HGTV is so popular? Travel Channel, Food Network. It's not, no one's going to watch an hour of food on a plate or a house. They want to see the person on there. So this is step one. This is basic steps. Step two is this. This Love is a gimbal. Mm -hmm. This is made by DJI. They also make a bunch of drone equipment. Uh, a lot of the virtual tours that you see of houses, you'll notice the camera movements are very smooth. They're not shaky or anything. Something like this is what they're going to be using. So the way that this works is it has a gyroscope in it. And if I turn on, you'll see, no matter where I move this, see how smooth that is? No shaking, no craziness there. This lets you do those smooth camera movements. The cool thing about this is that you can also use the selfie camera, tap your face on the screen, and it will follow you around. You can literally set this in the middle of a room, walk around, and have it follow you. So this is step two, all right? How much is one of those, Tyler-ish? Oh, you think? I, I stole this from the Apple store for about 150 Not so, really stole, FYI. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, Disclaimer, didn't really <laughs> Yeah, about 150 for these. You can get them as cheap as like 75. You can get them as expensive as, and look, there's Denise right there. Do you use a stabilizer? Yes. <laughs> yeah, there that's you go. exactly what that is. Yep. So step three, when you really want to up your game, is one of these, a DSLR camera. Diane asks, what is this called again? This is called a gimbal or a, you might see it as a stabilizer. This one in particular is called the DJI Osmo. And I will type that, or somebody will type that will. in is the it chat. OSMO. Uh, o okay. And they have the Osmo two and three. I think Deborah, you have the three. I do, and I love it's it. It's very nice. So, it's, it's, it's seriously a game changer for those of you that are not comfortable with technology yet. You're just starting to get associated with video and tools. If you got a smartphone, go purchase this gimbal DJI Osmo for 100, 150 bucks. You're set. That's all you need, literally, just to get started. But keep oh, going. Yeah. DSLR camera. So obviously this is going to be great for taking pictures, but what a lot of people don't realize is this is what I've shot almost every long form video that I've done for the past four years on is this guy right here. Uh, Canon, I particularly like, they have amazing video quality on their cameras. They have a little flip out screen. So again, you can watch yourself record as you go. Uh, you can get stabilizers for these. They are considerably more expensive, but I'll tell you, just get a tripod or set this on a desk, record yourself. And I'm going to tell you the number one thing, and then I'll get off of my soapbox. The number one thing that people don't understand about video is video is only about 50% of the experience. The other 50 is audio. Mm -hmm. Never skip out on audio. This is a shotgun microphone right here. This attaches to the top of your camera, and you plug it in. You can also get like a little lapel mic that you can literally plug right into your iPhone and get great audio from. Be, be aware that audio is huge. If something sounds terrible, people are much, much less likely to listen to the entire thing. Lynn just said, can you recommend an, an adjustable tripod? You know what I really wanna do? Because I think this is gonna be super helpful for everybody on the feed. After our session, I'm gonna follow up with everybody with an email of links of all the tools. You can go straight to Amazon or the website directly and order them. So yep. just stand by Lynn and everybody that's watching this live or on the replay, you're gonna get hit with a couple links from us after the session with links to check out that lapel mic, to check out an adjustable tripod, to check out the the Osmo stabilizer. We're going to send it to everybody. Don't you worry. We got you. And, and it, sounds like, the, oh. sorry, it sounds like everybody has questions on um, just different pieces of um, equipment. Okay, why don't we just have our next webinar on uh, fun equipment to use? Ooh. That's a great idea. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, man. I, well, I will give a presentation on that. Oh, yeah. Well, guys, so, Thursday, May 14th at 11 a.m., we will be talking about tools yeah. and in your technology so and Tyler is going to run this so one. Excited. Oh yeah. And let me, let me tell you the biggest thing. Cause I know a lot of people are going to be thinking about this, especially in the era that we live in. This stuff is not expensive. It can, no, it can be expensive. You can go spend, you know, $10,000 on a video camera. I, I, I would, most people wouldn't, <laughs> but you don't have to like, look at this iPhone, iPhone SE. I got this thing from Best Buy for 50 bucks. It is a prepaid old phone. It shoots 4k video. You don't even have okay, video. To do it, right? No, this thing works off of Wi-Fi. I don't yeah. even have service on it. Exactly. I got it to shoot little videos and to use as a uh, a Wi-Fi calling phone. So, so like, you really, you don't have to break the bank to get this stuff. You can do a cheap setup and be 
leagues better than everyone just because you put that time and that effort into this equipment. Okay, I'm done. I'm gonna go back to the presentation real quick because we are going okay. down a rabbit hole fast, but I love it because this is all really relevant stuff. Um, so real quick, I'm gonna jump forward. So really working from home is all about developing that routine. Lots of people are out there saying it right now. I cannot uh, say it enough. When I first started working remotely in one of my prior positions, it was really difficult for me initially. There are lots of distractions. Yes, I wanna go do my laundry. Yes, I wanna go walk my dog. You know, yes, it's an emergency to get a cup of coffee. But you know, having that routine is critical um, and making sure you get up, you brush your teeth, you get ready for it and you actually dive into your work and sit there and focus, it's critical. And I think a lot of our team actually uses a lot of different tools to help all of us stay on task. So we're gonna dive into a couple things um, to show you kind of what we do and how we do things, um, not just internally, but we've actually shared some of these tools with our Coming Soon Homes marketing clients as well. Oh yeah, all right, you're back with me. <laughs> all right, some tips here. I have three pieces of software that I wanna to talk to you guys about. I have videos on all three of them, so I can save my voice. My allergies have been kind of kind of rocky, so bear with me. Uh, the first one I wanna talk about, let's start with Glip. So Glip is, you guys remember AOL? Oh, Everybody yeah. remember AOL Instant Messenger, Yahoo yeah, yeah, Messenger? Yeah. It's basically the new version of that, but you know, actually good. So I'm gonna show you guys a little video that I shot about what Glip is, and uh, that'll explain it better than I can ramble off right here. So let me get that started for you. All right, everybody. So here's a very brief introduction on how to set up your Glip account. So to get to this point, all you have to do is go to app.glip.com or just glip.com and uh, sign up for an account. You can either type in your email address or sign up with Google or Facebook. I have chosen to sign up with one of my Google accounts. So once you do that and hit allow access, you'll be at this screen. So let's go and get started. So here's your basic workspace for Glip. Uh, you can do as it says here, you can start a chat, which is basically an instant messaging uh, service on here. You can send direct messages to individual people. You can create teams of multiple people. And there's also more actions that you can take, which we'll go over in a second. So very basic. You can type a message and send it to a person. It is an instant messenger. Think AOL, think iMessage, think WhatsApp. That's, you know, pretty simple. But there's so much more to it than just messaging. So down here, you'll see we have messages, contacts, tasks, calendar, and more actions. So if we go to contacts, this is everyone that you have in your Glip that you have added, people that you can talk with, people that you can add to groups, coworkers, guests, everything. Under task, this is a very basic task manager. If you use something like Google Keep or Asana, you're gonna feel right at home here. You create a new task. So uh, finish editing video, enter. You can assign it to a certain person. You can put when it is due and you can say which section the task is in. Once you finish it, you just click to mark complete and it's done and it disappears. You can look at all your tasks. You can look at uh, tasks assigned to you, posted by you, pending tasks, complete tasks, everything. So it's very simple. You put the task you want in there, you complete it, it's done, you can assign tasks. They even have a little tutorial video right here if you need a little bit more information there, but it is pretty simple and I think most people will get it. Moving on here is the calendar. Any tasks that you put on here will go on your calendar. You can even integrate this with your Outlook, iCloud, or Gmail calendar right here. There you go. There's your little calendar sync link right there. So Glip is something that I use to communicate with everyone in my office, but also with my clients. It's a, it is honestly the fastest way to get in touch with people because, I mean, it's an instant messenger. It's instant. But the coolest thing about Glip is not only can you send messages, you can share files. So similar to like we did with Google Drive, if I wanted to share a file with someone, but they're on Glip, just click whichever file you want to share, hit open, it'll upload it, and boom, sent to that person. You can like the file, you can bookmark the file, you can pin the file, or you can delete it, move it to a different folder, save it. Uh, now, sharing files, you can either do that individually with a direct message to another person, or you can share it within a team. So when you create teams, 
Uh, it's just as simple as being like a group chat. It just has everybody all there together. You can invite, I think, as many people as you want. I don't think there's, I'm sure there is a limit to the amount of people, but, you know, most smaller, medium-sized offices will have plenty of slots open. You can share the link to have them come via an email or text or instant message. You can invite from your Gmail contacts or from your Office 365 contacts with Outlook. Uh, the cool thing about a team is you have all the same options. You have team tasks. You can integrate apps into your team, such as Asana, the task manager. Uh, different other things in here, GitHub. You can put in Jira and MailChimp, uh, really anything. And the coolest thing about Glip is you can use it for a variety of things. It doesn't have to be real estate. If you just want to talk with your family through Glip, you know, go right ahead. Uh, but you can share files to groups as well. So it's really good if you are... For example, right now, a lot of us are working from home, and if we need approval for something or if we want to bounce ideas off of someone rather than do the Google Drive, share this, share that, you know, that works great for people who you're emailing something to or someone who you're not communicating with on a daily basis. But Glip, man, it's really fast to just be able to share that file, put it in there, open it, upload it, boom, there it is. So there's, again, like with my other video, there's a lot more to Glip. Uh, you even have the option for video chats. You have the option for audio. Uh, you can color code people. There's a mobile app. There's so much that you can do with Glip. But that is just a little basic introduction to get you started. I am a Glip addict. Addict. <laughs> Wow. Glip is such a cool tool. That was so an cool. unbelievable video, Tyler. You deserve an Oscar for that one. That was so <laughs> good. Wow. Pat on the back. I'm, crazy, I'm blown away. Guys, because Glip is so simple and it's free. It's actually a tool provided by a phone company. So if you guys are looking for a company to uh, deal with all your phone management situations, uh, Ring Central is a great option. But Ring Central built Glip is kind of like a free platform just to get people in interested in it and it's great so just like Tyler said it's very similar to slack but like while we were planning this webinar I had Tyler and Riley and I that all needed to communicate in time at the same time about one thing and let me tell you how annoying and hectic that can be through email and text yeah. message I mean it gets crazy and so when I can just pop on blip start a team with Tyler Riley and I and we just bounce back and forth and send people stuff and go crazy it is so much more effective to do it that way especially if you're a team leader you got other people underneath you to communicate with this is a fabulous fabulous thing to implement we've implemented this in a couple of our own coming soon homes marketing clients um, and it's done wonders for us and it sounds simple that like Tyler said we actually can get in touch with them sometimes faster that way I see a it's little free it's and free it's, free. it's completely free it's free and they have and a phone I, app they have an iPhone app that's literally what I was about to say. So I am now out of Florida. I relocated. And so it's great that if I'm out or whatever, I can message my team, just like with Riley showing you instantaneously, wherever I am, um, I can upload a quick picture. So if you're an agent and you have maybe someone in marketing, a really good thing to do is while you're the agent out of the property, take a picture of the, the property, upload it into your glip feed to your marketing person. Boom, we're on it. That is how fast we can get to things. So implement technology, the right technology that doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. And I think Glip is one of them. Oh yes, we, we are a Glip family here. It is <laughs> phenomenal. Now we're gonna go to another piece of software that also starts with a G, but by a different <laughs> company. We're gonna talk about Google Hangouts and FaceTime. Now I don't have a video demo for these because I think a lot of people are familiar with how a video call program works. I just wanna talk a little bit about the differences in these two and their use cases. FaceTime. If you've made the correct decision and gotten an iPhone, you have FaceTime automatically installed on your phone. Every iPhone has it. So if you have clients where you have their mobile number and you want to show them a house, FaceTime is going to be the quickest way to do it. I think we talked about that a little bit before. Um, if you're one-on-one -on -one with someone, FaceTime can support group video chats. So if, if you're working with a husband and wife and the husband is one place and the wife is at another place and you want to show them all everything at the same time, you can do that with FaceTime as long as you have their phone numbers or their Apple ID. Uh, a, an easier way to do that that is multi-platform is Google Hangouts. Google Hangouts is cool because you can use it on any web browser, iPhone, Android, everything. Google Hangouts is what I use to communicate with all of my clients. Uh, it is super, super quick. It's super easy. You just go to hangouts.google.com and Deb has something. It's free. It's free. <laughs> it's free. There you go. 
It's free. <laughs> and uh, I, I like that. That's going to be our new thing for free stuff. <laughs> It is free. Uh, you can share your screen with other people. You can do video chats like we're doing right now, but it's all live. You can have multiple people on there. It's great. Uh, I really have no complaints about it. Until someone makes something better, that is going to be my default standard that I go to for video conferencing. And you can use stuff like Zoom, is. but Google Hangouts is good. What were you saying, Riley? So that's how we plan this webinar is we did it on a Google Hangout. Yep, all in Google Hangouts. And I dropped the link for, and actually Google, by the way, BT Dubs, Google changed the name of it to Google Meet now. Um, so I just dropped the link to use Google um, for any of your businesses. So just feel free to uh, check that out when you get a second and implement some video strategy into your communication. And that's one of the amazing sure. things is I haven't seen Google limit um, their video chatting Whereas like I've seen it slow down on YouTube and other platforms because everybody's on their on, online right now, but I haven't seen that interfere with. Uh, yeah. Yep. Good point. Yep. A picture is worth a thousand words. Video is worth an infinite amount of words. Like being able to communicate with video is, I mean, we're living in like back to the future times. Like it's crazy. I love <laughs> it so much. Uh, okay. So this, this is my favorite thing to talk about and I never shut up about it in the office is Google Drive. Yes, I am an Apple person, but I can admit when the competition does something better, and Google Drive is pretty dang cool. So I have a quick video for you guys. It's how to be a master at Google Drive in five minutes or less. All right, here is everything right, you need to know about Google Drive in five minutes or less. So what is Google Drive? Think of it as a flash drive that lives on the internet. You know how you have a flash drive that you can put photos and files and videos and everything like that on? Well, imagine being able to access that flash drive anywhere in the world without taking it with you. That is what Google Drive is. So when you first go to Google Drive, the easiest way to get there is go to drive.google.com and it'll ask for your login information. This is the same login that you use for Gmail or if you have any other Google service, it's just your overall Google account. So when you get into Google Drive, this is the first page that you'll see. You'll see they have this little file for you here that says getting started. Let's take a look at that. So this is a really good way to explain what Google Drive is. You can store your file safely and you can store photos, documents, any file will go in Google Drive. It syncs seamlessly. You can use it on any Mac, any PC, any smartphone is able to use Google Drive. So let's talk about how to add something to Google Drive. It works just like a flash drive. I'm going to move my internet browser over here. I'm going to open up my computer documents right here. So here's a picture right here. It's just a regular picture. All you have to do is take it and drag and drop it right here. And that will upload the file instantly to your Google Drive. So now you can just close your documents and we'll work right out of here for the rest of this demo. So there's the picture. Double click it. It opens just like it would on your computer but everything that happens in Google Drive stays in your browser. It works on Google Chrome, Safari, it works on Windows Edge, it works on pretty much any modern browser that you can name. So once it's here, this is how most people stop using Google Drive. They just say, there you go, there's the picture, it's in there, I can log into this on any computer in the world and grab that picture. All you do, go to a computer, go to drive.google.com, log in, there is your picture and any other files that you put in. But there is so much more to Google Drive than that. And I'm going to show you one of the ways that I really like using it, and that is called sharing. So in order to do this, I would recommend creating a folder. So we'll just right click just like we do on a regular computer and hit new folder. And we're just going to say test demo as the name of this folder. And we're going to hit create. You will see that folder pop up right there. Now, just like you would on a Windows computer or a Mac, take your picture and drag it and drop it right into that folder. And now we look in there and voila, the picture. So let's come up with a scenario. So most people watching this are probably an agent or someone in the real estate field. And let's say you have a client that is awaiting professional pictures or they're waiting for something, right? And you need the fastest way to get them files. Well, you can email the files, but you're limited to how many files you can email and how big they can be. Or you can send them a link to access this Google Drive folder. 
And it sounds complex and it sounds crazy, but it really is this simple. So there's a couple ways that you can do this. I'm going to show you the long way and then I'm going to show you the short way. So double click test demo right here. Go up to your little drop down menu and click here and you'll see this that says share. If you'll click that share, you can now type in their email address. So my email address is Tyler at coming soon homes.com. I would just click send. You can add a little note here, you know, here's your pictures. And there you go. Click send, it will send them an email and they will be able to access everything in this folder just like you can. It's that simple and believe it or not, that's the long way. The short way is even easier. Go to your folder that you've created, right click it and hit get shareable link. That will instantly copy a link that you can put in any email, any instant message, and send it to someone. And the link's kind of long. If you look right here, I'll paste it. There's the entire link. But once you hit get shareable link, it copies. I've been it doing it the long so way this whole time. Is go into an email, an instant message, anything. Right click and hit paste, and there is that link. Now, here's a little a little tip about sharing things on Google Drive. If you go to sharing settings right here you'll see a few options. By default, anyone that you give that link to can view the files. Let's say you're collaborating with someone and they want to be able to add pictures to that same folder. All you have to do is click right here and put anyone with the link can edit. And then everyone you send that link to will be able to edit the contents of that folder. So you just copy that link, send it over. A word of warning, Make sure you send that to people that you trust, because when I say they can edit it, that means let's say you send 100 pictures to someone, they can delete all 100 of those pictures. So be careful and send this to people that you trust. And that is my brief demo of Google Drive. There is so much more that you can do with it, but for the simple things, the, the basics, Wow, another Oscar-worthy performance by myself on that video. Thank you so much. I love Google Drive. Like I said, it is it is such a cool piece of technology. I can't believe it is still free. Uh, if Google starts charging for it, I'm going to be very upset. But I will definitely definitely pay for it because I that is one thing that I I literally use every single day is Google Drive. It's amazing. It's amazing, and it's free. It's free. Yeah, Google is Drive free. is amazing. We use it for, I mean, again, we use it internally. So like if we have an agent client, like when uh, for Marty Hampton's real estate team, she shoots all kinds of video content. And we want to be able to have everything in one place that every single member of the team can access at the same time. So that's how we've used Google Drive. And again, I could be out on the beach, which I'm not, but uh, I wish I was, but I could be out on the beach, open my phone and upload whatever I need to or download whatever I need to out of that Google Drive. And so it makes things very, very easy. And again, it's free. So definitely, definitely need to do that. Now, I know we're running a little bit over, but I just I can't stop yet because we got two more things to roll through uh, before we leave you guys. And this is being recorded. So don't worry, you will get the replay. If you're watching this, make sure you're in the chat box and comment replay. So we know you're watching the replay with us after the fact. But if anybody knows me uh, really, really well, they know that I am the loom queen. <laughs> Yes, um, queen. I swear I use everything for loom loom is probably my number one favorite tool if I dare say that and I'm not being paid or anything affiliated by loom disclaimer I wish I should be but sure. um, as many oh, times yeah. we're, we're not sponsored by any of these but if anyone watching works for these companies and you want to sponsor us <laughs> we'll it's t-y-l-e-r at coming soon homes.com again that's tyler at coming soon homes.com <laughs> I love it. I love it. So Loom is a fabulous tool for screen and or camera recording. So if you're looking for an innovative way to communicate with clients and or team members, Loom is the way to go. And disclaimer, it's free. So yet again, another cool tool that you can implement today into your business to start doing something cool. So uh, we had a little video recorded. Let me grab it real quick just to show you how Loom works, how you can download it onto your computer. It is a computer based tool, at least for now. Um, so just keep that in mind. You'll need to pop open your laptop. This isn't a phone thing. Pop open your laptop and uh, do it this way. Let me get this party started and check out how you can use Loom. And I'm telling you, don't yet because this is going to be a tool that you need to implement.
All right. All right, I have a quick demo time for you today. We're gonna to talk about Loom. So the first thing you need to do is go to the Google Chrome Web Store and download this extension right here. Type in Loom, L-O-O-M. This one right here that says Loom for Chrome, offered by Loom.com. It'll have a little button here that says Add to Chrome. You won't see it on mine because I already have it added. So how do you start a Loom recording? Click this little button up here. You'll log in, you'll make an account, and then you'll have these options. You'll have screen plus cam, you'll have screen only, and you'll have cam only. For most people, they're going to do screen plus cam, so you'll be talking about what's happening on your screen, and you'll see yourself in your little webcam down here. Or, in this case, I'm going to show you screen only. You hit start recording, and then you'll see this little countdown going on right here. After it hits this, everything that you do on here is recorded on screen. Anything that you go to, so we'll just go to google.com. And we'll type in Disney World, because I love Disney World. And there it is, Walt Disney World Resort. So, check this out. This little button up top, hit it again, boom. It is done. Everything that I just did is recorded on this, this video. Everything that you do on here is recorded on screen. And there you go. That is how to use Loom. After you do this, you hit this little download button right here. You can throw it on YouTube, on Facebook, wherever you want. Or you can copy the link and send people to this page right here share the link, invite people. You can password protect your video if you want. Uh, you can even trim your video if you need to. They have a few little trimming. And we're back. Wow, another we're Oscar nominated performance. That That's is smart. crazy. That's three trophies now. Three Beautiful. trophies. Um, but let me tell you guys, I actually am going to share my screen. This is something I didn't want to do, but I want to because I think it's critical so you can actually see how I've, I've showed other agents to do this. Quick story about Loom. Um, I first started using it maybe about a year or two ago, and I have I deal with a lot of agents back and forth. I'm the sales and marketing director at Coming Soon, so I help onboard you. I tell you about our platform, what we can do for you, all that good stuff. And let me tell you, I get a lot of questions, which is great, but sometimes answering a question via email or text, it can be paragraphs long let's be honest nobody reads all of that and so I needed to find a simpler way to get my point across while also visually showing someone what I mean so let me actually show you an example this is one of our clients at coming soon home Seth Jensen shout out at a Denver Remax professionals love him and his team to death um, but Seth thought it was funny because one day instead of me emailing back I just shot a video back he was like oh what is this you know and he clicked play and it's cool because once you record a video you can literally Literally copy and paste the link into like an email a Gmail and it auto embeds the video straight into the email so it's very similar for those of you that know bomb bomb it's very similar to that but I actually like this even better because it's more agile there's much more you can do with it to control it so let me show you what I mean um, I hope all this works so if you guys can just give me a heads up when you see my screen Can you guys see that? I can. Perfect. So if you can see, this is what my back end of my Loom account it looks like. It's free. Again, it's free. You can't see me leaning into the camera, but it's free. Um, so Loom is awesome. So I have literally recorded 556 videos in my incubacy with Loom. And so all of these videos are hubbed here. I've done trainings with agents across the country. I've shown people and answered questions. If people want to know how to do something, I show them a video and show them how to do it. It is so much more powerful. But for example, if I want to come right back here and edit something, right? So I've already recorded this video. I can pull it up. This is all you do. So let's just say I just recorded this video. It's gonna give you a link. You just hit copy link. You can go straight into an email, paste the link. And I gotta finish out that email, but it will auto embed to the point that it will look just like this. This is my, my dude, Seth Jensen out of Denver. I love him. He actually sent me his own video. When he saw me using Loom, he's like, oh my gosh, I wanna use Loom too. So now he uses Loom to communicate with all of his clients, his internal team. Let me show you what his Loom looks like from a response. Hey, Deborah, I got a question. So I usually put a photo 
or whatever information I have. Um, so he's visually showing me what he means, which is really, really helpful because I can actually understand exactly what he's talking about from from the live section. So all of the videos that you use are hubbed in your my video section. So you can always go back to it. If you have a client or an internal team member, ask the same question a couple weeks later, just go back in your Loom feed, send them the same link. Um, so it's almost like a constant database or library of all the videos that you've created. And again, it's free. Um, for those of you that are a little bit more concerned about, you know, the editing, I know lots of agents are worried because they don't want to go live on something. Just like Riley and Tyler said, you can trim the videos to fit them the way you like them and use them accordingly. So Loom's a really awesome tool. Let me actually put that in the chat real quick. Loom.com. It's amazing. So it's basically just an extension that's going to download in your browser. You just click that little round circle whenever you're ready to record. I think the only page it will not record on is Google. So just keep that in mind. Um, but Loom is awesome. Let me go back to the slides real quick. And Deb, is there a limit to how long the video can be? Diane was asking that. What did you say, Riley? Two hours. Two hours. Dang, I didn't even know it was that long. That's amazing. So two hours um, worth of video recording time per video on Loom. So it's an incredible asset. One of our uh, favorite agents on Marty's team, Rebecca Brock, actually used this for her own clients. And she had to update her seller with, you know, what's going on with MLS stats and competition nearby. And so she jumped on a Loom call, recorded her face and her going through stuff on her screen at the same time. And what a cool experience to connect with your clients that way versus just with an email or even a phone call, which they can't see or, or touch you at all. So this is a really cool tool that you can implement pretty much immediately um, cool. if you, if you want to go ahead and get started. Now, I don't have a video for QuickTime Player, but for those of you that um, need a quick screen grab, I always go to Loom, but let's be honest, technology and shit happens. And so um, QuickTime Player is kind of my go-to. It's pre-installed on a lot of Mac, Apple devices. And I think, what's the, the similar one on PCs? It's weird on PC. It is called Xbox Game Bar. It's meant yeah. to okay. record uh, video games, but if you press the window symbol and then the G key, it should pop up. It's it. really rudimentary, really simple, but it works in a pinch. That's how I recorded the Loom video, was but with a Xbox Game Bar. That's funny. Just keep in mind, though, that a lot of computers nowadays have pre-built tools that you can use. You just got to go into your settings, play around with the tools. QuickTime Player is one of my go-tos. If for whatever reason a download fails, I'll just screen record the video and re-download it that way. So it's just an alternative way to kind of continue, continue leveraging things kind of as we move forward. Now, We've had four Tech Talks to date so far. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are going to follow up with links to uh, the prior Tech Talks, a replay link, so you guys can share this. We would love and appreciate if any of you shared the replay link with any of your own fellow agents, friends, or colleagues. Um, that would be awesome. We're really trying to grow this. We've uh, really hoped we've helped you in some way today. Give us any feedback in the chat. If there's any other questions you can think of before we wrap up here, just so you know, um, if you're not familiar with Coming Soon Homes. There's two parts to us. Coming Soon Homes is a website where you can pre-list your properties while they're preparing for market, aka Coming Soon Marketing. If you have questions, feel free to uh, let us know. We'll hook you up with a demo, show you all about the system. And then a new thing that we've been rolling out for the maybe about the past year is we have social media marketing. So for those of you agents that don't have time, don't have the energy, don't have the money, don't have the, you know, the creativity to create constant flow of content across Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. We want to help you do that. If you're not even on some of those channels, we'll build the channel for you and then start posting to it. So what we'll do, if you are interested in potentially partnering with me and my team here at Coming Soon Homes, we'll develop a monthly custom content calendar. Every single agent should have their own cost, custom kind of content going out. Every market's different. Every agent's different. Every agent has a different focus or niche that they want to focus in. So we will develop a custom calendar full of content for you every single month. We develop custom video projects, daily social media posts branded to you. So if you have specific colors, logos that you need used, everything we create is customized to you and scaled out across all of your social media channels. So social media management is really, really helpful. We create all kinds of content you can think of, including walkthrough videos, coming soon properties, trying to promote upcoming coming soon, open houses, active listings, price reductions, sold success stories, on and on and on. Real quick. 
quick, let me just show you an example before I let you guys go of some content that people should be doing. This is one of our clients out of uh, Harrisburg, PA, who is completely locked down right now. But it's important even to think not just about promoting your current properties. What about sold properties? What about the success that you've had? What about your, your team or business stats compared to the average agent in your market? What about the content about how people can protect themselves during COVID-19? What about motivational things? Everything you can think of can be customized um, according to your content plan. So videos like this can really help just even show a little bit of the success that you're having in your own business. Just a quick example. So it's simple stuff, but honestly, you need a team behind you to help you come up with the ideas. If you have ideas, we're the ones that can help you implement those ideas. We really are a team backed behind you. So I don't want to sell us too much, but I hope you've enjoyed today's experience. We really love doing what we're doing. We're always trying to push forward, update our concepts, update what we're doing for our agents across the country. We have clients all over the US. We're hoping for a couple in Canada. So any of you Canadians that are on here that might need some yeah, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Looking at you, John. Go check out uh, Coming Soon Homes Canada. We would love, love, love to have you on our platform. So we'll be following up with everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Anything else you guys can think of before we let everybody go? Yeah, we'll give like 60 seconds. If anyone has any last minute questions, come in. Um, I can go through here and see if there were questions that we didn't get to. Yeah, real quick, just to answer you, John, we do have Canadian clients. We have one out of the... Um, Ontario area and one out of Calgary area as well. Two huge, huge teams out of Canada that we're already partnered with. We would love the opportunity to partner with you as well. So feel free to uh, communicate with us. If you're interested already, if you like don't even want to take the, the chance of me not getting in touch with you, go ahead and email me right now at Deborah at comingsoonhomes.com. I'll drop that in the chat. Shoot me a quick email if you're interested. I'd love to talk to you about the Coming Soon Homes platform and or, or both of our our social media marketing. So shoot me an email. Otherwise, I'm going to follow up with you if you don't get back to me. And uh, we'll make sure make sure to share the replay and updating information about our May 14th next tech talk. Oh, yes, on technology. Our and tech if you uh, if you really liked my videos, just send this to the Academy of Motion Pictures. It's Tyler at ComingSoonHomes.com. Uh, if you need my cell phone number, just email you put me. It in there. <laughs> of course I put it in there. I'm, I'm serious oh, about this. Oh, man. You guys got a little show from Tyler. What a day. So oh, gosh. This next one. <laughs> You Thank guys don't you everyone even know. for your feedback. <laughs> Diane, such a pleasure to have you. John, we really appreciate it. We are doing everything we can to uh, provide value in this crazy, hectic time. And I know it's important that we show you how to do these things, not just talk about it. So we hope you've enjoyed it. Keep dropping in the chat. If you're watching this during the replay, make sure you tap in replay, and we will follow up with you guys soon. Everybody stay safe. If there's anything we can help you with, send me an email to Deborah at comingsoonhomes.com. Okay, guys, we'll talk with you later. Have a great one.